should you invest in blue chip stocks? So now let's look at some of the pros if we are to invest into a blue chip stock. So first off, longevity. It's because this business has been around for decades and they have shown their ability to survive through market downturns. Because we don't want to invest in something, then suddenly they went into bankruptcy and our money that is invested will be gone. And next is stability and reliability. They have shown a strong track record in their good earnings and also consistent performance over the long term. And also these are some of the brands or the names that we recognize. And definitely we look into their dividend payout, which there's a financial ratio that we look at is dividend yield. So here, the 10 best blue chip stocks to buy in 2023. But because due to time constraint, we will look into among the five of them. And this is not a recommendation to buy. The first of the company that we will look at is the Home Depot. Home Depot is an American multinational home improvement specialty retail corporation and they operate more than 2300 warehouse format stores in US, Canada and also Mexico. So they sell the products both in stores and also online and the dividend yield that they generated based on the latest result is 2.38%. So now let's look at their financial metrics. So for their revenue, it's a positive consistent uptrend and EPS, the latest one is 15, almost 16 and it's also a positive consistent uptrend and their operating cash flow is also another positive and consistent uptrend. However, for their debt to equity ratio, we wanted to see that it's less than 0.5, but we see that it has been quite a high debt, but the latest debt to equity ratio is at zero. So with that, we have to investigate into their annual report and find out what happened. So from here, we actually found out that there actually has a huge increment in their share buyback, which lead to a negative equity, which is the reason why the debt to equity ratio is equal to zero. The next company we will look at is Visa. It's an American multinational financial services payment processor and it actually facilitates electronic fund transfer via credit cards, debit cards and also prepaid cards. And it operates more than 200 countries and process more than 160 currencies. And we will look at they are actually involved in consumer payments, which is business to business, person to person and also business to consumer. And these are some of the value added services that they've also provide besides offering the VisaNet payment processor. And now we'll look at their financial statements. So their revenue is also a positive consistent uptrend and the EPS is similar as revenue which is a positive consistent uptrend. Cash flow condition is also a positive consistent uptrend. And the debt to equity ratio is slightly higher but we can see that it's maintained at quite a stable state between 0.6 but this is something that the investors should take note of that they are having quite a high debt to equity ratio but there are also other financial ratios that we will look at to determine if this is a good company to invest in next we will look at johnson and johnson it's a multinational healthcare firm where they are one of the manufacturers for the covid 19 vaccine and they have three main divisions in pharmaceutical medical technologies and also consumer products and they actually founded since 1886 so we can see that it's a very long history company and the products are sold more than 175 countries and the dividend yield that they generated is about 2.51 percent however the company has announced in november 2021 that they will split into two companies where pharmaceutical and medical technologies will be one company and consumer products will be another company now let's look at the sum of the financial numbers so the revenue for Johnson & Johnson is a positive and consistent uptrend then followed by EPS. So here has a sharp drop is because when we check into their annual report, they actually have, have to pay a very high tax due to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. But if we ignore this sudden drop in the high payment of tax, we can see that it's a gradual increment for the EPS. And for the cash flow, it's also a positive consistent uptrend. And the debt to equity ratio, we are pleased to see that it's less than 0.5 next company that we look at is 3M. So it's a multinational and multi-industry company and they actually leverage in science and technology R&D to manufacture various product categories. So they have a total of four business segments. First is safety and industry. Next is transportation and electronics. Then also in healthcare and also consumer products. And they operate in more than 70 countries and produce more than 60,000 products. And the dividend yield that they generate is almost 5%. Now let's look at the numbers. The first thing is the revenue. We can see that it's a positive consistent uptrend. Then next, we look at their EPS. It's also another consistent uptrend. And their cash flow is also another consistent uptrend. 
However, their debt to equity ratio is much higher compared to other companies that we've seen so far. So this is something that the investors should take note. And next, Texas Instrument. So for Texas Instrument, it's actually a semiconductor company and they manufacture various integrated circuits, which is the chip boards. And 95% are sold to electronic designers and manufacturers. So if you're interested to know more about semiconductors, you can look through our YouTube channel where we have covered some companies in semiconductors such as TSMC. And also, 5% of the revenue is actually generated from calculators. And they have two business segments. The first one is analog, which they produce chip that controls the power and also to detect signals, which is power and signal chain. And then embedded processing, that means these are electronic bots. Their products are actually used in different end markets, such as in industrial, automotive, personal electronics, communication equipments, or such. So they are actually the manufacturers for these chips and they will sell all these chips to this end market to produce the end products. Like for example, automotive, we can think of is Tesla. And the dividend yield that they generated is about 2.85%. Okay, so now let's look at some numbers. So first off, their revenue, even though the early start since 2011 until 2013, it was a decreasing trend, but then the subsequent years, we can see that it's slowly increasing. And the EPCS is a consistent positive uptrend. The cash flow is also another positive and consistent uptrend as well. And their debt to equity ratio, even though it's a bit high on 2020, but we can see that it's actually dropped to 0.57 in 2021. So these are the five companies that we have actually gone through that was recommended by the financial websites earlier.